Hi guys, I'm Charlie Atkins and this is Well and Good's Trainer of the Month Club. Today I'll be leading you through a lower back friendly hit class, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna get started with a mobility drill. I want you to come onto elbows and knees and then right knee is just gonna go through a giant circle. If you can, try to pull the heel towards the booty and you wanna picture your knee going up and over a fire hydrant. These don't need to be fast. You can take them nice and slow and controlled. Go ahead and reverse the direction of your circle and just keep in mind everything that we do on one side, we'll do on the other. If you're spilling over onto the left side of your body, see if you can press into both of your forearms and that should help you level off. From there, we're gonna switch to the left side. So I like to have my right toe tucked under. That way I feel nice and supported and all you're doing is taking your left knee through a giant circle. The reason why we came down to our elbows is because if we eliminate the wrist and the elbow joint, then it'll allow us to keep a nice flat back. Knee comes up and over a fire hydrant. Wherever you're at, just go ahead and reverse the direction of your circle, taking the knee in that giant circle. This is one of my favorite mobility drills. I do it before pretty much every single one of my workouts, and I always feel a lot more prepared to get into what we're gonna be doing that day. From here, adductor rocks, extend the right leg out to the side, toe pulls towards the shin, and then all you're doing is just pressing the hips forward and backwards. You should feel a nice stretch all throughout the right inner thigh. If you want a little bit more out of this exercise, all you have to do is press the inside of your right foot down into the mat. Just like in our hip circles, straight line from the head all the way to the tailbone. Everything that we do on the right side, of course, we're gonna switch over onto the left. So go ahead and switch. So the bottom of my left foot is not on the ground. That way you can press the inside of your foot down into the ground if you want a little bit more out of this exercise. Hips pressing forward and backwards, straight line from the head all the way to the tailbone. Next exercise, we're gonna be t uh, heading into a side plank position that is also going to not only challenge your core, but it's also gonna help mobilize your hips. So if I come into the side plank position, I'm gonna bend my knees so that my heels are slightly behind my booty, lift yourself up, and then all I want you to do is press your shin down into the ground, lift the top leg up, and then drive your heel away from your midline or from your body. Think about having a straight line from the head all the way down to the heel, and the whole time you're pressing your shin down into the ground while pressing the hips forward. So working the obliques in addition to challenging the hip mobility, which will make your lower back feel a lot more supported in all the exercises that we'll be doing here today. Go ahead and switch sides. So shin is gonna press down into the mat, knees are bent. Press the hips forward and then lift the top leg up. And then really think about keeping your hips lifted away from the mat while pressing the hips forward, using the shin to drive down into the mat and make sure that the shoulder stays out of your ear. Stay breathing. The more that you do this exercise, the better and the more stable you'll become in it. I know that it's a little bit challenging at first, but good news is we're done with that one. From there, go ahead and come on up to standing and we're gonna head into a sumo squat with a lean. We're just gonna do one side and the other. So start with the feet wide, toes are pointed out. Make sure that the chest stays up. You're gonna come down into the sumo squat position and then all I want you to do is lift your right heel up. You're gonna pause while leaning the body over towards the right and you're gonna come right back to center. We're gonna do this on both legs but for now we're just starting with the right side. I like to reach my hands out in front of my chest. It just makes me feel like I can hold my body up a little bit better. One of the biggest errors in sumo squats that I see is people tend to lean forward. So if I reach my hands out in front of me, I can make sure that my shoulders stay in line with my hips. And all I'm doing is just lifting my right heel up, shifting my body over towards the right, turning or warming these hips up. That way I can make sure that my lower back is supported in all of the exercises that we are doing today. Just a few more, try to give me three, two, and then one. You can stand up and we'll do the exact same thing on the left side. So starting with the feet wider than hip distance apart, you're gonna come on down, make sure that the knees are driving backwards and then all you're doing is just lifting the left heel up and coming right back to center. Good. 
So this is another mobility drill, but as you can tell, it's obviously working the lower body. This just helps make sure that all of the exercises that we get ourselves into are that much more supported. If you find that your legs are starting to burn, you can come up out of it and then lower back down and then continue on with that left-sided heel raise. Good. We've got less than 10 seconds left to go. Let's do four, three, two, and then come up out of it. From there, we're just going to be doing an alternating reverse lunge. So starting whichever direction you'd like to face, you're just gonna drop the right knee back and then go towards the left side. Back knee kisses the ground using your front heel to drive yourself up to standing. If you notice I have somewhat of a forward lean, that's just gonna help load my glutes a little bit more. That way these exercises feel a lot more comfortable in my knees and my hips. So using that front leg to drive me up to standing. Back leg is just a kickstand. These don't need to be rushed. One of the biggest errors that I see in reverse lunges is people tend to step too far back and then they feel the back kneecap kind of have a pull on it. So make sure that you're just stepping your foot back enough to where you're able to get that back knee to kiss the ground and come right back up. Good. From there, we're gonna head into our arms and our core. So come on down to the mat. We're gonna be holding a high plank position. Plank jacks, I'll give you two different options. Whew. Here we go. In your plank jacks, you can jump the feet in and out, or you can tap one foot and then the other. Micro bend the elbows, keep the shoulders out of the ears, and you're just tapping one foot out to the side and then the other. We've got about 20 seconds left. What tends to happen as this exercise goes on, our hips usually go higher. So I really want you to challenge yourself to bring hips in line with the shoulders as you tap one foot and then the other. Try gripping the ground with your fingertips and you've got less than 10 seconds left to go. Go ahead. Three, two, and come on up. Woo. From there, we're gonna head right back into those sumo leans. It's okay, catch your breath if you need it. I need it. Toes are pointed out, chest stays up. You're gonna lower yourself down into that sumo position. And then all we're doing is we're just leaning or we're lifting our right heel up and we're taking our center of gravity over towards the right side. <sighs> These don't need to be fast. If you start to feel your legs burning out in between, just reset, come right back down, shifting onto the right side. Now both knees should be pressing backwards and really make sure that the chest stays upright. You've got about 10 seconds left to go. <sighs> Stay in it with me. <sighs> Good. Let's do two more together. There's one and two, standing up. <laughs> Shake out the legs if you need to. We'll do the exact same thing on the left side. As we get ready to head into our reverse lunges, which is the next exercise, maybe you'll start to feel a lot more supported in those reverse lunges since we are doing this kind of mobility and strengthening drill before we come into an exercise like reverse lunges. Lifting the left heel up so that you're on the ball of the foot. Maybe try slowing down this one. If you go too fast, maybe you're not gonna feel everything happening in the hip. <sighs> Press the knees away from each other, that way they're pressing backwards. If you need to reset, you just stand up, lower right back down, and head right back into your heel raises. <sighs> Good. We've got three more left to go. Here's three, two, and good. From there, we'll head into our alternating reverse lunge. So whenever you're ready, back knee kisses the ground. Lift yourself up to standing. Now, if you would like to make this workout a little bit more challenging, just remember that you could always grab some dumbbells. You can either hold them at your side. If you have a heavier dumbbell, you can hold it in that goblet position, which is at the chest. But I do want you to have a slight forward lean as long as the head stays in line with the tailbone. Front leg is doing all the work. So as I step back, my front foot drives me up to standing. All you have to do is drive your foot down into the ground and that's gonna take you right out of that reverse lunge. We've got about 10 seconds left to go. Good. Give me one more on each leg. Nice. And then we'll head down into the mat for the plank spider. So two different, or plank jacks, two different options. You can either tap or jack. Both of them are gonna do the work. Setting up in that high plank position, you can either tap or you can jack. 
If you would like a little bit more or kind of something in between, you can do two daps followed by two jacks. So long as the hips stay in line with the shoulders. If you start to feel the hips going up high, do your best to pull the hips right in line with the shoulders. Micro bend the elbows, try shifting the weight forward. We've got about 15 seconds left to go. Keep the core strong. Keep going. Whew. Nice. Let's do five, four, three, two, and one. Whew. So heading into our second set of exercises, we've got two standing, two on the ground. First exercise are just gonna be bounces. This is a great way to strengthen your ankles. All you're going to be doing is just bouncing here in place. Two different options, you can leave the ground a little bit, or if you don't wanna leave the ground, you wanna do a little bit more low impact bounce. Just leave the balls of the feet planted on the ground and you're just kind of bopping up and down. If you want, you can chug the shoulders just to loosen things up. If you want a little bit more, you can always pretend that you're doing a jump rope and you're just taking the jump rope around in a circle. If you are doing jump rope, just see if you can spread the chest, pull the shoulders away from the ears. We've got less than 10 seconds left to go. Good. And then we're gonna head right into our seal jacks. So option one, you're just opening up a big barn door and you're tapping one foot and then the other. If you want a little bit more, you can just go ahead and hop in and out. Good. I like to do seal jacks over jumping jacks because they feel better on my upper body, especially because you're also strengthening your upper back by opening the arms this way, as opposed to jacking like this. We got about 15 seconds here. Modification if you need it. Remember, you can always just step one foot and then the other. Let's do five, four, three, two, and one. From there, we're gonna head down to the mat. Make sure that you breathe before you lie or come down onto the mat. <sighs> Big exhale. Coming into your bear plank position, start on one side of the mat. Knees are gonna be just above the mat. Straight line from the head all the way to the hips. And then all you're doing is just moving from one side of the mat to the other. <sighs> one of the errors that I see the most in this is people's hips usually come up. So you're gonna do the best that you can to pull the hips down so that the knees are just above the mat. <sighs> Works the core, strengthens the arms. Good. From there, we're gonna be doing leg lowers, one of my favorite lower ab exercises. Lying on your back, toes pull towards the shin, plug the elbows down into the ground. You're gonna reach your heel as far away from the body as possible. This is a double whammy. Not only is it lower abs, it's also hip mobility. So if you do find that a lot of workouts tend to kind of make your lower back feel unsupported, this is a great exercise to help build up hip mobility and core strength, which is gonna help with all of those workouts that you do. Whew, good. All right, that went by quick. Final round of exercises, same thing, bounces, steel jacks, lateral bear crawl, leg lowers, and then you're done. So just go ahead and start with your bounces. You can take the arms in a circle, almost like you're doing a jump rope, whichever one you like the most. If you are doing jump rope, make sure that you pull the shoulders away from the ears, and then try pulling the shoulder blades together behind you. Just keeping our heart rate up. Less than 10 seconds left to go. Let's do five, four, three, two. From there, you can head into your seal jacks. You can step one leg and then the other, or if you feel like bumping up the intensity, all you have to do is hop in and out. Spreading open the chest. Good. Just a quick little workout, strengthening total body. And goodness, this is we're almost done with it. We've got about 10 seconds left to go all the way through on this exercise. Let's do five more together. Here's five, four, three, two, one. From there, heading down to the mat for a lateral bear crawl. If you did want to challenge your bear crawl exercise, all you have to do is place a yoga block on your back, and that will tell you if your hips are going too high. So just moving from one side to the other, not letting your hands or your feet cross, keeping the hips 
right in line with the shoulders. Core stay strong, stay breathing. If you need to slow down the exercise, you can. Otherwise, heading to the opposite side of the mat. Good. From there, final exercise, leg lowers. You can either do leg lowers, or if you wanna do heel drops, all that is, is bending your knees. Otherwise, here we go. Reach the heel as far away from the body as possible, trying to keep the lower back connected to the mat. About 15 seconds left to go, really straighten the legs, reaching the heel as far away as possible, not letting the heel touch the ground. Let's do four more together. Here's four, three, two more, and one. All right. So that right there was a lower back strengthening workout or lower back friendly. Again, my name is Charlie Atkins and this is Well and Good's Trainer of the Month Club. If you would like more videos and workouts like this, make sure you subscribe below.